Let's bring in former U.S. Ambassador to Russia, Michael McFaul. He is currently the director of the Institute for International Studies at Stanford, as well as an NBC News international affairs analyst. Mr. Ambassador, great to see you this morning. Let's just start, just get your reaction uh, to what you saw today, these images that we've been playing all morning, this historic and surprise visit of President Biden to Kiev. What do you think it means for this moment in the conflict? I think it's a brilliant move by the president. Uh, fantastic that he's there. This will be inspirational to the people of Ukraine. And it'll also give President Zelensky a chance to talk one on one, as he already has done, directly to the president uh, to instill upon him the urgency of why they need more assistance. They need it faster. They need it now. Uh, I was just in Munich yesterday. I was at the Munich Security Conference. I spent most of my days there with Ukrainian officials, members of parliament, soldiers, government people that work for President Zelensky. And the disconnect between how the Western leaders speak about the war and the Ukrainians was palpable. The Western leaders all say, we'll be there for as long as it takes. And when the Ukrainians hear that, they, they hear that this is going to be a long war, and they're worried about a long war. They want a short war. They want weapons to launch their counteroffensive now in the coming weeks and coming months. And I think this gives Zelensky the excellent opportunity to make that case to President Biden. Mr. Ambassador, you know the man who sits in the Kremlin as well as anyone here in this country. Uh, he's no fan of yours. Uh, and I know the feeling is mutual. We could certainly imagine that he's not happy uh, with what he saw today. But tell us a little bit about what you think we'll hear from him tomorrow as he delivers his own speech, sort of a state of the war, if you will, to the Russian people just hours before President Biden does the same in Warsaw. I think he's going to explain to his people that Russia's winning this war. Uh, now, we all know that's not true. We all know that the 2022 was a year of victory for Ukraine and defeat for Russia. But remember, when Putin and his people talk about the war, they don't talk about it as a war against Ukraine. They talk about a war against us. They talk about it as a war against NATO. And he will make the case that against all odds, his country, his soldiers has taken on the greatest military alliance in the world, the most powerful military in the world, the United States of America, and are defeating them on the battlefield. And then he's going to say, we need to finish the job. We need to take the territories that he declared on paper to be now part of the Russian Federation. You know, those four regions, he, he had a big ceremony in, in the Kremlin in September and then a big party on, square, on Red Square. They're already making maps of those territories as part of the Russian Federation, even though he doesn't control them. But I think he's going to make the case that in the defense of the people of Donbass, that's the way he talks about it, uh, we are moving towards victory. Ambassador McFaul, the war seems to have accomplished one of Putin's aims, which is it has solidified his power and popularity in Russia uh, with the constant flow of propaganda, much different from the beginning of the war. Where is the middle ground that could, is there a middle ground that could possibly be reached that would placate Putin, that could end the violence that the Ukrainians are, you spoke to, are tired of the war. They have trench warfare going on. It's just horrific. What, is there anything that could be done in terms of negotiation? That's a really hard question and I don't have a good answer. And I'm a bit nervous to make an answer, to give an answer, because first and foremost, that's a decision for President Zelensky. That's not a decision for President Biden or me. Having said that, um, I, I'm not optimistic that there's trade space right now, because Putin, I have no doubt that Putin will continue to fight until, at a minimum, he, he either takes the territories I just described or no longer can fight. Uh, I don't see a, a scenario by which he, he negotiates over those territories. Conversely, when I talk to Ukrainian officials, including those very close to the president, they say we're going to fight until we restore our 1991 borders. That includes Crimea for them. So right now, both sides have objectives that are incompatible with the other side. And that's why, tragically, I think this war is going to go on for a lot longer. Yeah, U.S. and European officials alike think we're talking months, perhaps years, uh, before this conflict comes to an end. Former U.S. Ambassador to Russia, Michael McFall, thank you. We're so grateful you could join us this morning and provide your insight.